Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you for being with me again today. A day uh, or two ago I posted a video regarding, I think it was yesterday, regarding some uh, uh, a, an article reporting that uh, the Ukrainian intelligence uh, found uh, in the Kiev uh, neighborhoods after the retreat of the Russians um, in a house a, some passports, some luggage, some packages with uh, Soviet Union time passports for Ukraine uh, allegedly left by the Russians who left in a haste, in a hurry from the area. And uh, I made that uh, article and I thought that, and I, I claim, still claim that it's just a farce and it's, I don't think it's, it, that was really a Russian uh, action. I think it was actually a Ukrainian action. I don't think the Russians, and I gave all the reasons in the other, um, uh, or the argumentation, the arguments uh, against the Russians, but pro-Ukrainians uh, are possibly uh, creating this kind of situation, which is dumb. Anyway, uh, in this case, we have real passports uh, provided by the Russian Federation to Mariupol residents. And uh, it seems like the Russians not it seems, uh, as I stated many, many times so far, uh, Russia has a very high rate of consistency that is doing what they said they will do. That's why when the Russians are saying something, I can't believe this, uh, this, uh, this. some Western uh, politicians and world leaders, if you want to call them that way, or military leaders do not pay attention more seriously to those claims or threats or warnings and uh, it's, it's like they don't follow the tra uh, track, they don't create a pattern, they don't look at the pattern, the consistency rate. Uh, when the Russians are saying, hey, we uh, this cannot go into this, and if you guys do this, we're going to do this, and they do this, as I said, consistency, you should pay attention next time to, uh, to uh, that person or what country uh, you know, statements are. In this case, uh, the Russians said we're gonna go, we're gonna uh, liberate the eastern Ukraine, or where the, our Russian uh, uh, compatriots are. We're gonna save them from being killed by uh, uh, Kiev's armies since 1919, since uh, 2014, after um, all that uh, overthrow of a, legitimate, of a legitimate government occurred with the help of some Western agencies and. Uh, since then they say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna intervene. So they intervene and say, we're gonna do this. We're gonna accomplish this. We're gonna accomplish this. We're gonna accomplish this. And so far, it seems like they're moving in the right direction according to their plans, which is push uh, the Ukrainian army out, uh, securing the Eastern um, territories, um, organizing referendum over there, have people vote, uh, I know there's details that could uh, could be discussed, and um, now they're and then they're gonna be annexed to Russia. All these things were talked about, and they, and they happen. And now it shouldn't be a surprise that the Russia issues uh, Russian passports to those residents of those independent uh, territories who uh, might have voted to join Russia. Let's read. Let's see what's going on here. Obviously, this is an um, article coming from Ukrainska Pravda, Ukrainian uh, media outlet. So uh, you will figure out the terms used for certain um, situations and individuals. So this is from today, June 11, 2022. And this is the title. Occupiers give out Russian passports in Mariupol. On June 11th, the occupiers handed over the first Russian passports to locals in the occupied city of Mariupol, Zaporozhia Oblast. Details. On June 11, in the occupied territory of Zaporozhia Oblast, Russian passports were issued in the first locals to receive Russian citizenship. All right. Uh, the Russians organized a ceremony to mark the occasion. The occupiers did not say how many people came for their passports, though they pre previously wrote that they have received application from more than 70,000 people. Background. According to the Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs, more than 800,000 residents of the so-called DPR, 
self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, and LPR, self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic, received citizenship of the Russian Federation. All right. Uh, so, we got uh, so many people. They are now Russians, according to uh, Russia. Of course, they will not probably or certainly recognized by uh, the opposite club. And uh, as Russians don't probably recognize the Kosovarians and the Kosovo, I know they don't recognize Kosovo, so obviously if you say you're a citizen of the state of Kosovo or whatever the, the statehood uh, status that uh, province has at this point, the Russians would never or not recognize whatever they, uh, they say and they do over there. So that's the way it's going to go. It's going to be an alternative um, global um, world order. We're going to have it a bipolar. You know, one is the big club, the uh, U.S.-led club, and the other one is going to be the club formed of uh, Russia, China, India, Brazil, this kind, of, this kind of countries. Iran, we have, I we have. I posted another video just before this regarding uh, um, U.S.'s uh, actions creating a new club, which is the one that's going to be formed by this country, and uh, according to the Russians, they move forward uh, with creating a new G8 organization of some countries as an alternative to the G8 of um, the current G8, where Russia was kicked out. So now it's the G7. So um, I don't see anything that uh, gets out of the, I don't want to say ordinary, but out of the expressed uh, plan coming from Russia, they get citizenship. What's going to happen next? Um, what's going to happen if these things are not recognized? Which we are not recognized, obviously, and they will not be recognized. Uh, it's, that's going to be a fact. Well, well, I don't think the Russians will care much, especially if the second front and the second sphere of influence or the set of sphere of countries that will get along and create their own uh, organizations, maybe even break the United Nations. It's very possible. I mean, that was created through convention. And I say, okay, guys, let's do it called together the League of Nations, the United Nations, and so on, uh, to uh, you know, monitor this planet. But it seems like it just uh, went off the rail with one particular country who picks uh, most, most, mostly. Not that other countries are just abiding uh, to the United Nations. Look at Israel, for instance. Nothing can give up about the United Nations when they condemn the occupied territory. They should give back this to this. They say, OK, I'm, come and get it. Hey, United States. And not only that, they don't, they don't have to call the United States. They have their own uh, Zelensky's and uh, Shmal, Shmal's uh, prime minister of uh, Ukraine, right? Denis Shemal, Shemal, that how his name is, another one, all right? They have their own Weinsteins in positions of power that will, uh, you know, prevent things to happen. Uh, even if the uh, United Nations says so. So that's why I'm saying United Nations is just a kind of a whore used by uh, the guys with money, with the powerful countries who come and visit her whenever they need to. And then uh, they just pass her around. And then when they don't need it, they don't need it. They don't pay. And they don't follow uh, any rules. Sometimes they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay. They just use her. So this is um, the new thing with the passports. Yeah, this, they said they will do it. And they do it. Consistency. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong. Stay smart. Look for the truth and be just.